what in the world is that? I mean, they've never seen anything like it. Hey, it's Jason with Denworks. Got a new little rig here to show you. It's a 1966 Ford Mustang, factory GT, factory A code. Um, really neat little car. I've been fascinated with Mustangs all my life. Uh, I had my first one in 1987, and uh, you know you don't see factory GTs that often. You see a lot of clones and uh, different things, but this is a uh, factory GT. Um, and just so you know, not all. A codes or K codes are factory GTs and uh, the only way to tell is just uh, be able to look at certain things on the car in general and uh, stuff but nothing in the numbers tell you anything uh, that would tell you um, that a car is a factory GT unless you've got you know maybe an original build sheet or um, you know invoice or something like that but um, but you know just a few things to note GTs had in this year especially had uh, disc brakes up front they had a a code which is a 225 horsepower motor or a k code motor in it uh you'll see dual exhaust out the back out the valance and uh you know you'll have a different steering box which is a ax uh there's a little uh, stamping on it. it's called a ax on the steering box you'll see rally wheels on them but not all of them had rally wheels you'll see the gt stripes on the bottom and the the badge and uh, so you just notice different things. You'll see the fog lamps and stuff. That's all GT equipment. And uh, so anyways, we'll uh, walk around this uh, here and I'll just show you different things about the, the body in general. The paint is really old. I'm saying it's got to be at least 20, 25 years old and it's not perfect or anything. But overall, it's in good shape for a, a real nice driver. You know, it is a solid car. And uh, we'll uh, look across the front here. Overall, the chrome and everything's real nice. You'll see a little bit of age, you know, on a couple little spots on the chrome up here in the front, but, you know, not bad. You can see some little tiny crazing on the, the fog lamps there, you know, around the grill surround. And uh, you'll just notice things. You'll notice little chips and uh, different things on the car. But overall, um, you can see some little chips. It is a good looking car. When you look down the side, it does look fairly straight when you get it under lights or in the in the shade and stuff you'll notice a little bit of um orange peel uh you'll notice a little bit of you know it's not perfectly straight down the sides the some of the body panels don't line up perfectly and uh, so i think if someone spent some time and uh, loosened up some stuff and uh they could get it looking nice and straight uh again overall so um we'll go ahead and show you the lights here too you can see the fog lamps you got your marking lights, got your headlights, got fog lamps. You can see the fog lamps are working. We'll go ahead and turn the blinkers on. Got your right, which is actually your left, and you got your right uh, down there on the bottom. One thing uh, to note too, and a lot of people don't know this when they hook this up, but uh, if you got a factory GT, when you turn the fog lamps on, um, the rear tail lights turn on and uh, so if you turn the headlights off Your fog lamps are still on if I walk back here my tail lights should be on Which you can see there they're on right now and uh, that's just uh, that's one of the first things I kind of look at uh, When I get a GT I'll uh, just flip the lights on at least I know it's got the right uh, wiring on and everything in it so We'll just look at uh, some stuff here closer. You'll see some little chipping here, little touch-ups. Again, it's really old paint. It's not a high-performance car, but this was a, a badge that they use all like on K codes and different things. But it does have, um, you know, a, a aluminum intake and and stuff on it uh, as well. You can see these rally wheels. These are correct '66 rally wheels. They have a trim ring on them. 
they use this wheel from 65 to 67, but a 66 to 67 they use a trim ring, and uh, in 67 they actually use a different cap. But uh, you can see the GT badge. I actually love the look of the stripe on the on the bottom. Sometimes you'll see people put the stripe on there, and they'll have the regular emblems and stuff. And uh, but um, any Mustang I'd probably ever owned. Uh, um, I've always wished it was a, a GT. You know, you just don't see them that often. You'll see some little tiny bubbles down here at the bottom of the uh, the door, and uh, not bad. But a lot of Mustangs get them there. You look at the rockers; they look in good shape, very good shape actually. You know, no no rust bubbles or anything around the quarters. Um, I'll have it on my lift too, so you can get a a good look at it. Um, Go ahead and look here at the quarter. You know it's in in nice shape again. No no bubbles around there. And uh, one thing with vinyl tops, you know it's just important. Uh, either they're really good or sometimes they're really bad. And uh, if you ever see any little little pea size little bumps on a on a vinyl top, uh, you can have some serious issues. But this vinyl top is really nice, and you'll see. Uh, there's no little lumps, no little bubbles. It's actually in really nice shape. You can look here across the windshield. There's some little, tiny little, the little divots. I don't want to call them chips, but they're little rock divots and uh, on the windshield. And there's, there's a quite a few of them I can show you over there on the other side. Um, <clears throat> you look here, there's some little crazing and stuff around some of the chrome. And, uh, you know, again, it's kind of an older repaint and uh, you know not all of it's perfect anymore but overall pretty good solid little car you can see a little little kind of flaking or kind of little chip uh, right there and uh, we'll look down here down the side as well I mean overall I mean it is a nice little car I like the uh, the trumpets in the back here that's another GT option as well and you can see here the GT gas cap what we'll do is uh, we'll go ahead and flip it around here so you can see it uh, more in the sun on the other side. Okay, we flipped it around here so you can take a look at it. You know, the engine sounds really good. Go ahead and rev it up a little bit. I love the sound of these cars and uh, I just love the sound of those uh, trumpets. And uh, I like the little vents. You can see here, little vents in the back. and. Uh, Anyways, there's nothing like the sound of a little Mustang. And uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, look down the side on this side. You know, again, it, it looks fairly straight, and uh, but you'll notice some little little tiny uh, little waves, little little different things. You know, again, it's not perfect. Um, not trying to, you know, portray it as a $35,000 car or anything like that. Um, so, you know, it's not fully restored or anything. It's just a really nice little driver and uh, a lot of potential with these cars though and uh, they're very neat and uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, look across here you can see some little chipping a little scratch right there on the tail light panel you can see the tail lights are actually in pretty good shape I got some little water spots going on on my bumper here I should have rinsed it off but we've been driving it around a little bit you can see a little scratch right there on the bumper and uh, We'll go ahead and look. There's some little little tiny scratches right here on the quarter. Some of that could be buffed out, but not very much. I mean, it's going to have to be uh, touched up or repainted there. You see a little little tiny chip there. Right here is a little, little chip as well. You can look around the wheel well. Again, there's no rust bubbles or any, anything. I think, I can't remember if it's both sides or I got the pictures of it, but the uh, quarter panel is real common. That these will get rusty down here and I think it's the the passengers uh, side this is the driver's side but I think that was replaced I don't think this side was but I had to look back at my pictures um, but it's real common and uh, but you know no bubbles and the work looked like it was done you know fairly well you can look here the rocker and the bottom of the quarter this is a place where they can sometimes get rusty and this one's actually really good you can see a little chip there that's been touched up there's some little chips right here on the door. You can see some little pitting on the uh, door handle as well. 
go ahead and look down here at the bottom of the rocker no bubbles in the door and uh again your mustang um gt actually it's interesting in 66 they made these out of plastic the insert in 65 they made them out of porcelain um just a little side note there's a little scratch right there you can see some chipping right there on the door as well but overall i mean it's it is a nice looking car and uh and actually in in fairly good shape so we'll go ahead and uh look in the interior we'll we'll look underneath the hood it's super hot today um we don't get over 100 uh very often and uh it's just been scorching so um it's supposed to be 109 later this week which us Oregonians uh can't help that uh we would i'm kind of wishing the rain would come back now but Go ahead and uh, show you the inside. 
First I wanted to show you that the door locks work. Actually this key opens the doors and the other one does the, the, the ignition. The square one and then the round one does the trunk. But uh, the door locks do work. Go ahead and take a look inside. Sorry for the little bit of glare. You know, after doing so many videos, you think I'd figure out how to do that just the way the sun's uh, popping in there on us. So, but overall, uh, you know, the seats look real nice. You know, there's no rips or anything. And they, they look in good shape. You can see the rear seat is nice as well. And, uh, you know, again, no, no rust. I mean, uh, no rips or anything like that. I think the heat, heat's making me go delirious. You can see the back of the seat is in good shape and actually the these little side chrome pieces are actually in pretty good shape usually those are are pretty scratched up we'll look inside the uh the door jams you know they're not rusty look fairly good you can see inside this rocker again very very good shape up inside the jam here i don't see any areas of accident or anything and uh, i'll show you still photos of it under the door and stuff. And uh, one thing it could use is new uh, uh, windshield or uh, door uh, felts, you know, for the, the window. You can see here, they're just getting kind of kind of worn and stuff. So those are about $55. You can put them in, you know, in a, about an hour or two. Look here at the original door tag. It does match. We'll have that all decoded out on the auction. It does match underneath the hood, which is good. But you can see all the rubber, uh, bumpers and everything look in good shape as well, but I explained some more stuff when I was driving it, you know, just about uh, different things about the Instrumentation and stuff. So I won't mention that stuff again. So uh, but overall, I mean nice clean interior You can see the headliner It's not ripped, you know, it looks Looks in uh, real nice shape uh, good shape and you can also see underneath the dash the light uh, works underneath there, so uh, we'll take a look at the other side. Okay, here we are on the uh, passenger side. I'll show you that the key works there. You know, overall, nice little car. I mean, uh, the interior is nice, seats are nice, and uh, sorry for the for the glare on the uh, the camera here. It's just been really, really sunny, so we had to park it in shade here. One of my favorite things. And you know, on a new car, you would think it would be weird, but I love these Mustang rubber floor mats. Uh, they're very cool. And uh, I actually like seeing those in, in all Mustangs all the way up to 73. You can see the jams here are in really nice shape. You know, not rusty or anything like that. Look across the bottom. You know, no signs of any major accidents or anything like that. And uh, has it been T-boned or something like that? Because usually you see a lot of warpage up inside there go ahead and look at the, the back seat you know again overall in pretty good shape you can see the courtesy light works there behind the console and uh and i showed you the other side where it where it works uh for underneath by your feet you can look at the door panels again in good condition you know again we're going to show you still photos and and everything uh, of all this but I just wanted to do a little bit of talking um, and just show you different stuff on the car just kind of in person so um, we'll go ahead and take a look at some other stuff here we are uh, underneath the hood we have a little Mustang here and uh, first thing we'll notice here I just wanted to show you the VIN 6R07A131039 uh, 6 is for 66, R is uh, the build plant, which is uh, San Jose, California. When we looked at the, uh, the tag there on the door, it does match as well, the, you know, the complete VIN, but you'll see it has a DSO of 71. DSO is like the district so uh, sales office, which is up in, uh, in Seattle, but uh, um, the cars will be ordered out of there for the, the Northwest. So uh, anyways, 07 is for a coupe. A is for A code, which is a 289 challenge. It's called the Challenger uh, 225 horse. 131039 is the uh, consecutive unit number. And uh, so this is a, a true A code car. 
as I mentioned before, A code doesn't always mean factory GT. Um, and uh, I'll show you a few things on this underneath the hood um, that are just kind of signs. You know, you can't pull a Marty report on these. That's 67 and up. And you just kind of kind of look at a few things. The first thing we'll look at right down here, you probably can't see it on the camera. There's a steering box down there. And if you look, oops, sorry about that. There's a little tag down here. Should have had a flashlight, but there's a little tag on there that says AX on it. And uh, AX is for the quicker ratio steering box that the GTs had. The other ones would say AW on them, but that does have the correct uh, steering box in it. It does have disc brakes. You can see the bigger master cylinder as well. It's got disc brakes up front, and I'll show you that underneath. And also where the, uh, the lights come through here um, on the uh, radiator support, they come through uh, correctly as well. Um, the engine here, we'll start it up here in a minute. It's not all original. It's got a 302 block with 289 heads and correct manifolds and everything on, on it. And you'll see here it's got Edelbrock uh, Performer uh, 289 intake on it, so it's got aluminum intake as well. You'll uh, notice here it doesn't have power steering. You would have seen a pump right here in this area, and it does have factory air conditioning. Um, and the air conditioning's not, it's all hooked up and stuff, and, but it's, it's not charged. I've never really messed around with R12. Um, I'm just not an HVAC uh, guy. I don't mess around with that too much, but at least everything's there. You can see the condenser up here in the front. You know, everything's there, so that way you can, uh, you know, have that going again, which will be a nice add. You'll notice too, as I mentioned before, has the hypo badges. This isn't a hypo engine. Um, the uh, it's not the 271 horse, uh, but I did put the air cleaner on that a 271 would have. I like all the perforated uh, little screen on there on the uh, air cleaner. I just I like that air cleaner a lot better. So and you can see also it has uh, Cobra valve covers. So. We'll start it up here uh, in one second. I just wanted to show you the aprons real fast. You know, they look real clean. And I'll show you underneath. You know, they're not rusty or anything like that. Another neat kind of thing here, it's not that big a deal, but sometimes you'll see little holes cut right there, torched out. There's a Zerk fitting back there, uh, you know, back by the springs and stuff. And it was hard for mechanics back in the day to get to it. And uh, these ones aren't cut out, so you've got stock uh, shock towers and things which are, are nice. And you can see here, it's got new uh, KYB shocks up front. After we start it up, I will walk around it a little bit so you can see a little bit of the paint um, difference from inside the shop and outside. So, Okay, we'll start it up here. Uh, one thing I didn't mention before is too that it, it does have a little bit of a cam uh, to it. So go ahead and start it up. You know, sounds real nice, very smooth. Let's go ahead and rev it up just a little bit. You know, everything looks uh, pretty much in order. Sounds good, no noises or anything like that. And uh, so I like the way it sounds and, and stuff. So we'll go ahead and uh, go around here to the back. Go and rev it up. You know, it doesn't blow any smoke. I love the, the sound of the trumpets. Okay, here we are. I uh, pulled the Mustang in the shop just so you can see some of the, you know, different things about the paint. Um, we'll just walk down the side here real fast. You, know, you can see just a little bit of orange peel on it, you know, on the, on the sides. A little bit of scuffs and different things. You can see a little bit of, you know, here was that chip I was talking about. You can see little little things in the paint, a couple little spots there. Um, you know, the paint, I would say, you know, it, I mean, it's old like I talked about before, but it definitely is probably a 15-footer, 10-footer. As you get closer, you'll notice little things, uh, imperfections and different things. One thing I'd probably do, and uh, I would cut and buff it, 
and I think that would probably help it out a lot. Here you can see, hopefully you can see a little bit of the the orange peel on it. You know, it just gives you a different uh, kind of perspective. Um, you can notice little little tiny imperfections in the paint uh, right here. Again, if you had it outside, you'd hardly notice any of this stuff. So. Just a lot of cars in general look a lot a lot different uh, when you don't have uh, light on it and, uh, and it's in a darker shade. Here you can see a little bit of the orange peel, but you know I think actually cutting and buffing it would really do uh, wonders actually and uh, help it out a little bit. I did notice a couple little see here you can see a couple little things in the paint and uh, if you look across the hood you can see a little bit more of the orange peel uh, going on. I did notice a little tiny ding right here, but you can't see that outside in the sun. And a uh, little chip there, a couple little imperfections. So um, I just wanted you to be able to see it uh, just in a different kind of light. Sorry for the glare there. And uh, we'll just look down the side one more time here. And uh, hopefully that helps you out uh, a little bit more. Here we'll take a look at the trunk. You know the key works. You know trunk is in uh, pretty good shape. Sorry for the glare again. You can see an original sticker. That's a reproduction sticker. Uh, how to use the jack and stuff. It doesn't have a jack that comes with it, but we do have the spare. And uh, but we don't have the jack. Uh, you can get those probably about. They're about eighty or ninety dollars. Sometimes you see them on. Uh, on eBay. I think they actually, these cars are so popular, I think they even reproduce a re reproduction one. So, uh, you know, what I want to show here is just, you know, original spot welds and stuff. You can see the trunk gutters look in really good shape. You look here on this side and uh, I don't see any rust. You don't see any rust, you know, on this lip. You know, a lot of times they'll get rusty down here in the bottom and stuff. So, overall, I lost the camera there for a minute. Uh, overall, it's uh, pretty solid. You can see underneath here, it's got a brand new gas tank in it. It's got its cardboard uh, fillers here. And uh, you can see some undercoating that was done on the trunk. Uh, so it's just kind of a coating in, in here. But overall, the, the trunk looks really good. You can see the tail light panel is in good shape. You know, it doesn't look like it's been hit in the back or anything like that. And uh, overall looks pretty good. We'll take all this stuff out and show you photos and, and stuff in, in it in, in general. One thing I'll note here, actually, if you take this little rubber plug out, on factory GTs, if you stick your finger in here and point that way, there's actually a block-off plate in there. Um, on factory GTs and cars that had factory... Uh, dual exhaust they put a reinforcement in the frame rail and this has it there so they put a, 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 a reinforcement there so I just wanted to show you that um, so anyways we'll uh, pop it up on my lift and stuff and you can get a better look at some other stuff hey here we are underneath the little Mustang GT we're gonna uh, do a video and we also uh, show you the still photos and the auction, but I think it's nice to have a video in general because I can point out different things uh, more than just photos. So uh, just easier to talk about it sometimes. So we'll just uh, go ahead and here and uh, start in the front. You can see the tires are in really good shape. Already talked about what they are earlier, but um, you can see here the wear is very good. You know, there's no inner and outer wear. We actually did have it uh, aligned as well. We just did that. And, uh, but whenever you're looking at Mustangs, it's important to uh, look up here in the inner aprons. You don't see any damage. I don't see any rust pairs. That looks like the original uh, apron to me. You know, there's no rust along the frame rail here. Really important to see uh, there. You can see here the uh, torsion bar looks good. Radiator support looks in good shape. You can see old crusty, you know, paint and uh, different things. It hasn't been restored underneath, but um, you can see some paint flake off right there. But um, overall, it looks good. 
You can see here the torsion bar bushings look in good shape. Some little minor cracking, but uh, more so just weather checking. Nothing I would be uh, concerned on uh, switching out. You can look up here. This is the back side of the battery. This is the battery box. Very solid, not rusty. You can see up there in the shock uh, tower, looks very clean. And you can see the frame rail. You can see here it's got, uh, you can see the blue here on the uh, sway bar. Uh, it's got polyurethane um, on the sway bars. And you can see here the disc brakes, which factory GT 65, 66 had disc brakes. It's got a newer hose on it. I didn't put it on there. Uh, but it looks good, uh, no cracks. You can see a little tag on it over there. Um, I did put new shocks up front, KOEB adjustable gas shocks. You can see those on it as well. Other things we did to the engine, um, I talk about the upper upper stuff, but we put a new oil pan on it with a new po oil pan gasket. We changed the oil. Uh, if you don't know what this is, that's a, the fuel pump. Uh, it's a mechanical fuel pump factory. You can see here the the um, <clears throat> motor mounts look good, no cracks or anything. You can see this side looks in good shape. Again, we didn't rebuild the motor or anything like that. Uh, we just did a, you know, just changed gaskets and, and different things on the valve covers and uh, oil pan. And uh, so we just did a cosmetic uh, look, you know, timed it and uh, everything. The belts look in good shape. You know, overall, it looks pretty good. We'll go around here, look at the inner frame rail on both sides. Look good, I don't see, you can see here it doesn't have power steering. It's manual steering uh, car. And uh, here you can see that polyurethane uh, blue uh, bushing there. You can see here on the inner frame rail, again, looks, looks in very good shape. One thing if you know, this is really common on Mustangs. You'll see the frame rails. Usually they're all dented up down here on the bottom. And it's from people, you know, going over curbs, uh, jacking up on them. Uh, and, you know, just not doing the stuff they're supposed to do. And I, I can't ha handle it when they're all dented up. So we actually went another step and actually put new frame rails. And uh, it's not that hard to do. They just disconnect here. We made sure we put the factory holes and everything in it, but we took them all out, spot welded it, uh, it all back in. And uh, now they, when I look underneath here, nice and clean. And uh, you can see up here in the front. And uh, I just hate the look of it. You can look here on the driver's side. You know, again, very, very clean. I mean, they should be, they're new. So we can go ahead and uh, look at the floor as well. So, you know, obviously had the carpet out and everything looked pretty good uh, and we went ahead and uh, pour 15 the floor and uh, looked pretty solid there was a couple little spots right here in the floor and on the other side in the same spot we did some little a uh, little bit of welding there was a couple little pinholes but uh, nothing uh, major where you had to repair the floor or uh, replace the floor or anything like that you can see the rest of the floors all the factory undercoating underneath here you know I went ahead and when I did those frame rails too um, I didn't want to put undercoating on them I, I just wanted to keep them clean I could have sprayed some on there but I just I didn't want to do it you can see here the floor looks in very good shape and uh, original floors in it you can see there's no seams on the inside and uh, you go ahead and look at the rockers Rockers look good. These holes are uh, the drain holes. You know, usually if these get filled up, you'll end up with a bunch of rust on the uh, up there on the rockers. So overall, it uh, rockers look really nice on this little Mustang. You see here the drain holes. You can see all the original spot welds. You can see this drain here isn't plugged or anything. Right up here, you can see the uh, where the spring mount goes into the frame rail. Looks in good shape. Go ahead, look at the other side. You know, a lot of times you'll see these really rusty right up in here and uh, no kinks or anything like that. Very clean. We'll come back here and look at the frame rail all the way back. You know, again, it looks 
looks in really nice shape. Again, we put uh, new gas shocks on the back as well. It's got dual exhaust. You can see there it has an H pipe. Uh, I forgot to mention too, we went ahead and uh, put a new gasket on the tranny and uh, serviced the transmission as well, new fluid and uh, filter. I'll go back here and look at this frame rail here on the pass on the driver's side. You know, again, it looks really good. That's exactly the way you want to see a frame rail in these cars. And uh, sometimes you'll see them get all poofy and stuff right here, but uh, you know, from rust. But these actually look really nice. The other thing we did too is uh, put a new gas tank in it and a new fuel sending unit and uh, check the fluid in the back and uh, on the rear end it seemed in pretty good shape and I haven't seen any leaks U joints feel feel good and uh, but all we did is check the fluid there you can see this uh, trunk drop off is original and it looks good you know the one on the uh, driver's side looks good as well but you can see a little bit of a couple little rust spots right here on the corner and uh, you look down here in the bottom of the quarter, you know, it looks in, in pretty good shape. Factory drains. You can see it got across here on this side. You can see some little filler, little edge right there. You don't see it out here, but you can see a little filler edge uh, right there. So um, anyways, hopefully that gives you a good look of the rig underneath. Um, if you got any questions or anything, you can just give me a jingle, call me, email me, uh, ask questions through uh, BAT if you want to send someone out and take a look at it, look at it in person. Uh, I'd be glad to show it to you.